I would, so. I would just add one thing, and I heard this cited again by the police officer in the panel today, and it was given lots and lots of publicity. The only event that I heard about, I wasn't there, so I didn't see it, was earlier in the day, maybe 11 o'clock or so, that some demonstrators actually ran out into Academy Boulevard and slowed down or, or blocked traffic, and I think some of them were arrested Brief. and briefly. And, and that's, that's the uh, uh, only event I have heard cited by the police that um, justified, might have justified uh, their actions. What else did you hear in there today? Or you didn't hear much in there, but uh, what rebuttal do you have of what you do know that they were saying in there today? What I heard was uh, just a fragment, but it was one of the panelists talking about, well, the mob came down from Boulder to make trouble, and they were starting to take over, and everybody else was getting into a riot mode, so we had to do something. That, which is BS. They, no. Their own tapes would not show anything of the sort. Their own no. records. There's no evidence of that whatsoever. So, you know, George Orwell projected a lot of this, just double speak and saying the opposite of what actually happened and say it enough and people believe it. That's there really was, why we brought our lawsuit, you know. We don't want it to let it keep happening. There was one, um, I think, ironic thing that happened I found rather amusing, and that is that after a while, I guess after the apparent blocking of the roadway for a while in Academy Boulevard, the police closed off a, consider a pretty long stretch of Academy Boulevard and diverted traffic around it. And then as some demonstrators, and I was among them, went to the edges of the blockade of the diversion where traffic was still moving, allowed to move, and stood there with their signs and flags. Behind the blockade. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, well, uh, outside it, you know, essentially. Yeah. And in, uh, I don't think, I'm almost sure this wasn't anything intentional by any demonstrators because no one could have predicted it. But in some demonstrations, and certainly not this one so far as I heard, uh, <clears throat> people go in and say, as they did at the start of the war in downtown San Francisco, uh, close it down. Let's stop business as usual. What was happening was that uh, a larger and larger area of Colorado Springs was being closed off by the police in their reaction to the demonstration. So they were, for the most part, on their own, closing down business as usual. <laughs> yeah. I don't have any more. And I... Um... I didn't see the panel discussion today, so I don't have any rebuttal. Yeah, I just heard a few minutes of it. And, uh, and I have to say, it's regrettable that my state of mind is that I think I could have a rebuttal without having heard what was said. Is that <laughs> I feel like I could just assume oh, no. what was said because I've heard it before. And wouldn't it be better for everybody involved if I, as a plaintiff, had more trust that real change is being pursued on the part of the city, that I could really say, well, I wasn't in that panel discussion today, but I'm pretty sure they talked about, you know, some real reform and improving their practices, the police, and I have a feeling that's not what happened. And as I think about it, I'm more convinced that um, the last minute statement by Tom Reese that, yeah, we weren't really going to edit anything out, um, I think he might have I'm more convinced that he heard that from above, saying, "Okay, yeah, we'll, you know, we'll change our, you know, we'll change our mind. Tell him this." And I don't think that was that was intended in advance. Hmm. And he was probably so, as surprised as anybody. Yeah. Well, it was just fundamental misunderstanding of of vocabulary. Talking about editing, you know, there has to be normal editing of the film. Not necessarily to get rid of content, but just to make it work so it's nice and viewable and flows right. well. And, and if it were just that, uh, his higher ups would have no objection to us taking a look at it at all. Right. No objection. So there's no, you know, so that, hmm. I think this was a last minute switch. Hmm. Use, use car salesman switch. <laughs> well, I'm 
pretty gullible. I kind of believe it, but maybe I won't if I think about it more. Yeah. Older and wiser <laughs> colleagues here. <laughs> Older anyway. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, so this is one example of white privilege that we can be here today, you know, having gotten a lawyer on board and sued the Colorado Springs police and you know, it's using our some of our advantages in society as uh, Caucasian males to make some change. You know, and not that we've accomplished a whole lot so far, but um, I think the Colorado Springs police do feel under quite a bit of pressure, otherwise they wouldn't be trying to hide so much. Mm -hmm. That's one perspective. Yeah.